thanks for joining me today for Pilates with Laura. Today's session is going to be a fusion of Pilates with some basic yoga moves. Sometimes it's called yoga, um, yoga Lattes, so hopefully you'll enjoy. Let's start with our setup and mobility. If you're not comfortable in a seated easy pose, then feel free to do this section standing up if you need to. Otherwise, you can maybe sit on a cushion or a bolster to elevate your hips and release pressure around the hip area. So let's just push the flesh away from the sit bones. Just the hands are relaxed on the thighs or relaxed on the knees, with the palms either up or down. So start by anchoring into the sit bones, lifting and lengthening through the spine. Just imagine that string coming from the top of our head and drawing us up towards the ceiling. And then lift the shoulders up, back and down. Slide the shoulder blades in towards the spine to create a little pinch between the shoulder blades. The arms are relaxed. We've got a light engagement through the core. Let's start with a few shoulder rolls. Just lifting the shoulders up, back and down. Bring some mobility in through the shoulders. And just a couple more of these. And then lastly, just slide the shoulders up back and down again and back in towards the spine. You should also feel like you've opened up through the chest. Inhale, drop the chin towards the chest. And then roll the head through towards the right shoulder and lift the chin parallel with the floor. We'll do the same on the other side. Relax the head and neck. We just want to mobilize the neck. Relax any tense muscles before we start our routine. So let's just do one more of these to each side. And then after the last one, the head comes back through the center and then we lift the chin parallel with the floor. Just allow your left hand to float down onto the mat, then inhale. And as we exhale, just take a big reach over to the top. Inhale, and then exhale and float the other arm up. Make sure you're anchoring down through the sit bones. You can even put some pressure through the hand. So we've got a push and a pull effect. Feel that stretch up through the side of the body, opening up the ribs, increasing the space between the ribs. And we'll do one more of these to each side. It's a lot of mobility for the spine in this routine. Hopefully you will feel the benefit of that. So float that arm down and gather up your hands, placing the palms together. Rest the thumbs on the sternum and the fingers just sitting underneath the chin. We're going to inhale. Now as you exhale, rotate to the right, chin staying above the fingers. Inhale through centre, exhale, rotate to the left. Again, just be aware the weight through the sit bones, evenly placed through each side. And as we twist, it's a gentle movement. We're working with our own range of movement. And maybe just be aware if there's any tension coming up through the knees and just allow them to relax. We've just got one more of these to each side. Pressing gently through the palms. And then lastly, coming through the center. We're going to release the arms and just place them in front. Now tuck the chin towards the chest and just bring your spine into a C shape. So you're protracting the chest, closing it in. Inhale and then exhale and open up the chest. Allow the arms to go behind the body if that's comfortable. Inhale. And then exhale. So feel that movement coming in through the rib cage. Inhale. And then exhale. 
So we're really opening up the chest on the retraction. And just avoid bringing the shoulders up towards the ears. So we're just bringing some movement in through the spine, preparing ourselves for our cow and cat movement. Let's do that one more time. It should feel good. And then from here, float the arms down and bring yourself safely into a four-point kneeling position. First of all, place the hands under the shoulders and the knees under the hips. Set of cow and cat. Inhale, lift the chin and lift the tailbone. And then exhale, tuck the chin and tuck the tailbone to arch the back. Inhale, and then exhale. Inhale through the nose. You can exhale through the nose or you can exhale through the mouth. Whatever feels natural. Now we feel that movement coming through the spine. We're mobilizing the spine here. And we've got one more cow and cat. Bring the spine back to a neutral position. Push the bum back towards the heels and take your front arm underneath the back arm. Bump towards the heels, palm up. Now rest down on that front shoulder. Just feel a gentle stretch in that shoulder for now. And maybe push the bum back further towards the heels if that's comfortable. And just stay here for two breaths. Inhale and exhale, taking a deep breath, even although we're in this folded over position. Now on the next inhale, we're going to release and come up into a modified side plank. So just place a hand under the shoulder and that foot should be in line with the knee. Reach the fingertips up towards the ceiling and open the chest. Inhale and reach the arm over the top. Stay here for up to five breaths. If you can, on the next inhale, you lift the foot, lengthen the leg away from the hip. Again, just hold this position or inhale. Exhale, now open the chest and start to lean back slightly. Pointing the hand away in the fingers and only going as far as feel comfortable for you. One more breath. On the next inhale, we're going to release back through centre, float the arm down, the leg down, come up onto both knees. Push the bum back towards the heels and allow the arms to come by our sides with the palms up. Inhale and then exhale, come up. This is called a Tibetan sun salutation. Reach the fingers up towards the ceiling as if you're going to give yourself a hug. Fold the arms over to try and get the hands round the shoulder blades. Inhale, bum towards the heels, curl up into a ball and then Exhale, engaging through the core to control the movement. Maybe the other arm on top, it doesn't matter. Inhale, and then exhale. You can take a baby back bend here, pushing the hips forward and lifting the chest. That is optional. Inhale, and then exhale with or without the baby back bend. Remember we're aiming for that mobility through the spine. This will be our last Tibetan sun salutation. And then inhale, float the arms down. We're gonna to turn to the other side now. Set up for a cow and cat combination. Hands under the shoulders, knees under the hips, inhale. Lift the chin, lift the tailbone, exhale, curl under. 
maybe a little bit more movement now. We warmed up the muscles. We are mobilizing into the spine. It's like giving your spine a massage. Two more of these, inhale. But if only one of these exercises feels right for you, then just do that one. This will be our last cat. Back to neutral, bum towards the heels, front arm under, palm up, threading the needle, dropping down onto the shoulder, pushing the bum back towards the heels. Oh, deep breaths. Remember, we can still manage that even in this position. One more breath. Inhale, exhale. And now on the next inhale, we're gonna come up and rotate round into the modified side plank. Align your hand under your shoulder, your foot in line with the knee. Reach up towards the ceiling, hold this, or reach and lengthen. If you can, on the next inhale, lift the leg. And either just hold this, just as it is, or inhale, and start to open back, looking behind you, maybe further on this side. Using the breath. One more breath, and then release. Place the foot and the arm down, push up to kneeling, and just sit the bum back onto the heels and release the arms in front. Inhale, exhale, sit down, relax the head, and then just release. Now we're going to go for the dancing cat. The dancing cat, same, mobilizing the spine. We're going to engage into the core a little more. We're going to use the front leg. So hands under the shoulders, knees under the hips. From here, we're going to inhale, bring the knee towards the nose, arching the back, and then exhale, lift the foot and try and point the toe using the hamstrings and the glutes. Inhale. Exhale, dancing cat. We're just doing three more of these. These are just to prepare us for what we're going to do next. Now the option would be to stay with this move or to take it up into full plank, working more into the core. So we're going to release onto the both knees, hands are under the shoulders still. Core is engaged, tuck the toes under, come up to a high plank. So just make sure here that you're not dropping through the hips and putting tension through the lower back. And neither are the hips up in the air. So the hips and shoulders are in, are in alignment. You're pulling up and into the knees and pushing the heel away. Now we're going to do something called a knee to nose. It's a bit like the dancing cat. Inhale, knee towards the nose. Slight arch in the back, exhale, just bring that leg back out, just back in line with the hips, we're not curling the leg up on this one. Inhale, exhale. And we're going to do this up to five more times. So strength into your supported leg, hands under the shoulders. Try and lengthen the leg as you extend it away. Two more times. Remember you can always change movement or just rest if you need to. Last one. And then place the foot down. Come back up onto the knees. I'm going to turn to face the front, the same leg. The front leg goes out into gait. The knee is under the hip. The hips and shoulders are square to front. 
that you can have your foot in a neutral position or keeping the hips square, you're gonna lift the toe and wrap around it into the inner thigh. So we've kept the same position with the supporting leg. We've opened up the hips and the pelvis. The core is engaged. We're gonna inhale and reach the arms up towards the ceiling. So instead of you being drawn towards the ceiling, but the shoulders are staying down. So that little pinch between the shoulder blades. Inhale, and as we exhale, tip towards your toes and allow the bottom arm to float down wherever it lands. Inhale, and then exhale. So try and draw the shoulders away from the ears. We're working into the core and also into the muscles in the waist. And that mobility through the spine is now a lateral flexion. Inhale, exhale. We've got two more. So our last gate, reaching over to this side. And now just for a moment, inhale and exhale. Try and reach the other way. It doesn't feel quite so natural, but keep the knee under the hip and just draw the shoulders down and lengthen through the arms, now being drawn in the opposite direction. And then inhale and release. Release that foot, turn the other way, start the dancing cat. Hands under the shoulders again, knees under the hips. So front leg again. Inhale. Exhale. Just five. But remember, you can always go back to this move. Mobilization with the spine and strength. This is our last one. Release, set up for the high plank. Hands are still under shoulders. Toes are tucked, heels are pushing away. We're drawing up into the knees. Shoulders are away from the ears, the core is engaged. Inhale, knee to nose. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. So we've still got our mobility coming in through the spine but we're strengthening through the arms and the shoulders and the core. Three more times if you can. Stretching through that extending leg. This is our last one. Back onto the knees, turning to front. The same leg out into gate, square off, knee under the hip, neutral through the foot, or remember the wrap, toes pointing up, so feel that open through here, into the groin, into the hip, and into the inner thigh, inhale reach up, exhale tip, and allow that bottom arm to land wherever it lands, try to be aware of any differences on this side of the body compared to the other. Obliques, muscles in the waist working. And we're not just bending over to the side. It's a feeling of lifting up and over. As if you're coming over a big balloon. And we've got one more of these. And then from here, just for a moment, inhale and exhale way in the opposite direction. Someone's got hold of your wrists, holding your arms. And inhale and release. Float the arms down, come onto both knees. We're gonna come down onto our side now. So we're gonna bring the elbow underneath the shoulder. Extend the arm, the legs out. So the legs are in line with the body. We're gonna bend the bottom knee to start with. You don't have to. 
You could stay like this, or you can bring that top leg over. I will demonstrate that in a few repetitions. So I'm going to start off with the basic version of the move. The knee bends, the top leg, the foot touches the mat, and that leg is still in line with the rest of the torso. And this knee's not somewhere in front, it's still in line with the rest of the body. So we've got really that strong position to start us off. Draw the shoulders back and down, open the chest, engage the core. Inhale, and as we exhale, reach up, move left it up through the waist and the core. And we're being supported also by the underside of the hip and the thigh. So from here, we're going to inhale. And as we exhale, reach under, threading the needle. Inhale, and then exhale. So we've done a lot of preparation for this, with the spine twist as we were seated, and also the thread needle when we're on our knees. Inhale, exhale. So we're doing up to five more repetitions after this one. And I'm gonna demonstrate now the other positions. My body doesn't like this, so I'm gonna take this leg in front. Now lift up. Now I'm pushing into the forearm and not the elbow. Just check that you're not over-rotating back. So the fingertips are pointing directly up towards the ceiling. One more time. Inhale, exhale, release, come up, roll the shoulder if you need to, and then we're just gonna flip round to the other side. Setting up in whatever position that feels right for you. And also, as an option, you don't actually have to lift the hips up off the floor. You can do the thread needle and keep your hips rested on the mat. Remember, it's all about what feels right for your body. Inhale, exhale. So I'm starting off with the modified version. Pinch between the shoulder blades. As we lift, float up, chest is open. I'm just going to adjust my position now. So now we feel engaged with on the underside of the body, pushing into the forearm, sweeping the arm under, the palm facing up. One more time, keeping the hips up to the last, and then release. Come up, roll through the shoulder, and now we're coming on to our backs. So we're going to start with the feet, hip distance apart, knees bent, and just roll yourself safely down onto your back. But to make sure here, then we're going to stabilize the pelvis before we go into our supine mat work. Hands up by our sides. Think about lengthening the spine, engaging between the shoulder blades. But we also need to think about the position of the pelvis. It needs to feel a bit like a triangle. It's flat, if we're in neutral, or we just press Gently, the lower back in towards the mat, just to reduce the lumbar curve if it feels unsupported. So neutral or imprinted position. I'm very comfortable in uh, neutral because I haven't really got that much of a curve in my lumbar spine. So we've lengthened, we've stabilised, we've stabilised the pelvis in a position that suits us. Now we engage into the core. Zip. Third of three up, belt to the third notch. We're going to place the fingers either on the temples or we support our head. Or somewhere in between. 
Elbows are wide, chest is open, the core is still engaged. I'm going to inhale, and as I exhale, I come up and I'm gonna to reach towards the knees. Inhale, fingertips back, and release. Exhale, come up, reach. Now you can just keep this going, just as it is. Or, we can add some pulses coming up and pulsing. Three, two, one. Fingertips back to temples and lower back down again. Lift, three, two, one. The pulsing is going to prepare us for the Pilates seal. We've got two more of these. Space under the chin. Look towards your knees. Keep the core engaged. So this will be our last one. I may have done one extra. I'm not actually that good at counting, as you probably know if you've done my classes. Float the arms down. Make sure we're still in that strong setup position. Maintain the stability in the pelvis, engagement into the core. Inhale and exhale, float one leg up to tabletop. So the knee, if we're in neutral, directly above the hip, shin parallel with the floor, foot in line with the knee. Same on the other side, inhale, exhale. Now maintain that stability in the pelvis, we're just going to do light toe taps, like we're going to dip our toes in a pool of water just at the bottom of the mat. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. So alternating legs. Now this is to prepare us for the seal. We're going to take the weight of the legs and maintain the stability in the pelvis whilst the legs are moving forwards and back. So right now, hinge at the hip, Maintain the angle at the knee. One more time to each side. And then float one leg down and then the other. Before we go into the seal, just release the legs. It's good to release the hip flexors and maybe take a full body stretch. And now we set up for the seal. If you're not happy with the seals, you can go back to either of those moves. You can even put them both together if you wish. So, feet at distance, knees in line with feet, the arms are by our side, we've got length, we've got stability, we've got engagement into the core. We're going to inhale and exhale and float one leg up the tabletop. Imprinting, remember if you need to. Inhale and exhale. And now I'm going to inhale and exhale and float the arms behind the head if that's comfortable. Fingertips to ears if it's not. Now I'm gonna inhale and as I exhale, I'm gonna extend the legs away to about 45 degrees. And now inhale and exhale, bring the knees in and I reach up towards the hips. You're gonna inhale, extend, and then exhale, reach up towards the heels, taking the knees wide. So we've got a crunch through the upper body. We're keeping the tailbone in contact with the mat. And you can just keep it as a single movement. Or we can add that pulse like we did before. Three, two, one, extend. Three, two, one, extend. Up to five more if you can. Remember to stop if you need to. Everything has to be done with complete control, quality of movement over quantity. I think we've got two more. So then this is our last one. Extend, tabletop, 
arms put down, one leg down, then the other. Release that legs. Blood back to the hip flexors. And then we're going to do the yoga version of this shoulder bridge, which is only slightly different to the Pilates version. So for the yoga version, your feet can be hip distance apart, or if you want more space around the hips, you can take them wider to the edges of the mat if that's comfortable. So just place your feet wherever feels right for you. Arms are relaxed by our side. Still got that length into the spine. We're gonna walk the heels further in towards the bum. You might just be able to touch your heels. You might not, it's not really that important. Think about stabilizing the pelvis to start with. Arms by our side. Inhale, curl up off the mat. Rolling up vertebrae by vertebrae. And then exhale and roll back down again. Vertebrae by vertebrae. Back to your starting position. Inhale, come up. And then exhale and roll back down. So in Pilates, we're not aiming to balloon the chest. But in yoga, you want to really get that space into the front of the body. So it's not about scrunching up the back of the body, it's about opening up the front of the body, the chest, the abdomen, the hips, the pelvis. Two more times. The repetitions help us to find a little bit more space. So the movement is helping us to find space. Now, if you want to, you can release from here. Take a break, draw the knees in towards the chest, or on the next one, we're gonna hold it up. Now we're gonna try and walk further up onto the shoulders, and now coming into the half wheel. The arms are relaxed where they are, or if you want more strength into the arms, clasp the fingers, and try and create a little platform with your arms coming further up onto the shoulders, but there's still a space under the chin and a space under the neck. So we're not scrunching the back of the neck, we're opening up the front of the body. We're gonna hold this for up to five breaths. You can bring the toes further up, lift the heels. And it's really important in this position that we don't move the head and neck just doesn't like it. So if you need to have a look, then release, check it out, reset. Just one more breath. And then release the arms and the heels and roll down vertebrae by vertebrae. Bring the knees together. Take the arms out in a cross shape. Hands and line the shoulders, palms up or down. Inhale. Exhale, take the knees to front and look to the opposite arm. Inhale, exhale, do the same on the other side. We've just got one more thing to do. We're going back to the front of the body strengthening the core, the upper abdominals, and also the lower abdominals. So this will be our last supine twist on this side. And bring the knees back to the center, the arms back by our side. Reset, feet have distance, knees in line with feet, length into the spine, stability, shoulders and pelvis, imprinted on neutral, engagement through the core. Inhale, exhale, float one leg up, tabletop position. Inhale, exhale, float the other leg up to tabletop position. And again, you can support your head if you need to. Otherwise, inhale, exhale, float the arms behind the head. Now from here, we're gonna inhale and exhale. If you can, you don't have to, you can stay in this position, but if you can, extend the legs, legs together to 45 degrees. 
Then we inhale. Now as we exhale, we bring the toes up, point to the ceiling, reach up towards the toes as far as you can. Inhale, 45 degrees, the arms are back behind the head. Exit. A last little bit of work. Now, if you wish, you can bring in the lower abdominals a little bit more by just peeling the tailbone off the mat as you reach up towards the toes. Now, I can't actually lift my tailbone really very far at all. That's not what counts. It's the engagement of the lower abdominals. It really depends on your body shape and type. How much you can lift. I could maybe get a sheet of A4 paper underneath my hips if I'm lucky. Some people can maybe get a magazine or a newspaper. That's as much as we want to lift. So two more of these. And we're going to finish, if you can, with seven small pulses. Seven, six, five, small movement, four, three, two, and last one. Float the arms back, tabletop position, one leg down, then the other. Extend the legs. Let's take a full body stretch. Fingertips through to the toes. Relax the arms down. Bend the knees. Let's just start with drawing the knees in towards the chest. And you can take hold of your thighs underneath or your shins on top. Try and draw the knees towards the arms and just a gentle rock backwards and forwards onto the lower back. So a little bit of a release. And if you feel comfortable too, then maybe a little release side to side. We're just going to finish with a few stretches back of the legs, hamstrings, and around the hips, mainly. So let's start by floating one leg back down, drawing the knee in towards his chest, extend the leg, hold on above or below the knee, and just draw that leg in to stretch the back of the thigh. The other leg, that can stay straight or bent. If you want to straighten the leg out, relax into the front of that hip, you can. Just check that the tailbone stays in contact with the mat. Take a deep breath in. And as we exhale, maybe extending that stretch. Shoulders are still relaxed. Inhale. Exhale. And on the next inhale, release. Place that foot down. Same on the other leg, draw it in. Inhale, exhale, extend, hold on wherever is comfortable, never on the back of the knee itself. Try and allow that leg to become light. Again, that leg can be straight or bent. Try and use the breath. Inhale, and when we exhale, it's normally when we can go a little further as our muscles relax. And stretching is very progressive. We'll get a bit of spring back as the muscles cool down, but we will always be able to go a little further next time we come back to the same stretch. And the next in breath, release. And place that foot onto the opposite thigh. Just allow the knee to relax. And then inhale, exhale, reach through, take hold of the thigh, relax the head and shoulders. This stretch is for around the hip. Outside, some people also feel it on the inside. Wherever your muscles are tightest is where you'll probably feel the stretch most. This stretch is called a thread needle stretch or a supine pigeon. Release, we'll do the same on the other leg. Reach, 
And time to focus on your body. Be aware whether one side feels different to the other. And it's normal if we do. Not many people are blessed with symmetrical bodies. Release. And from here, we're just going to carefully roll onto our side. We're just going to finish. With a child's pose stretch, take the knees wide, bump to what, back towards the heels, extend the arms in front, and then inhale, and exhale, push the bum back further towards the heels and drop the head down towards the mat. We're just going to finish here, I'm just going to turn on to this side so you can get a better idea of what's happening. Inhale, exhale. Just finishing here for a few breaths if that's comfortable for you. Otherwise, you can finish laying on your back in the traditional relaxation pose. The knees wide, we're giving ourselves space for the upper body. Space to breathe. back into the muscles. Maybe on the front of the forehead, releasing any tension, or maybe on one side, into the temples, or maybe the other. And on the next inhale breath, then to release and just come back up. Take your time. Thank you very much for your time and your effort and your energy today. Thank you so much for joining me and I will hopefully see you again soon and enjoy the rest of your day.